So we'll start with reception of guests. Welcome, Sorsha. Any agenda revisions? I do not. So we can table that. We'll move it down to future agenda items. Since we um, didn't have a meeting on board goals, should we attempt to add that in, or or should we? Uh, Let's add it as a three points. Let's do a discussion item if we get through everything else before 8.30. We'll discuss that. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? So like 3.6? We'll call it 3.6, but I will go out of order and complete the action agenda before going back. So maybe we, we'll do it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Any other adjustments? All right, public comments. Well, I guess I could start with a question. Um, so on the agenda, item 3.2, I think you said it's about board involvement in the hiring process. And I'm In guessing, interviewing, yes. I'm guessing, well, that was my question. Is the focus going to be on whether or not to interview the candidate or not? Yes. <clears throat> okay. I, I would actually like to broaden that out and say what is the board involvement in the hiring process as a whole? Because interviewing okay. is upset about that. Um, so I guess I'd like to just say a few sentences about Great. my thoughts on that, and then please talk you guys to it. Um, let's see. I guess I would encourage you guys certainly not to let the interview go. I mean, the board is still a hiring entity, meaning that the teacher cannot be released to the Romney community without your approval. and. Um, I, I think it's one of the most important duties that's still um, under the jurisdiction of the board. Um, so two points to that. I mean, one, um, the personnel costs, I think, are the biggest costs at the school. And you guys are the fiscal agents for the town. And just as a, a matter of personal responsibility, I would hope you'd want to see this person. Um, it, and not anything to do with not trusting the rest of the process, but. Um, just a, as a checkpoint um, of responsibility to, to see, just to check out who you're sending over to the school. And more importantly, I think, um, is the relationship between the board and the teacher. This is, your, this is your first meeting point, even if you know you're going to approve the candidate that's sent over. Um, this is the beginning of your relationship, and it's a board um, action. It's a board action, and I think that's important, more important than private conversations that might happen with the teacher after they're hired at Rumney. Um, this is the beginning of your relationship. And I would hope that you would want to be looking for ways to build on those points of contact as a board. And I keep saying that because I think, um, you know, in, in the last couple of elections, that's been a big issue, the relationship between the board and the teachers. And I and I've heard you and you and Chris, too, during the re-election re talk about what a priority that is. And I'm feeling a little disappointed about the lack of leadership in that direction. And so when I saw this come up, I was like, you know, I, I know you guys are swimming against the stream a little bit. I was on the VSBA when the, the language concerning the hiring process got altered. So I, I, I appreciate that you're swimming against the direction, but I just wanted to come and encourage you, please, to keep a hold of what you still have and, and build on it if you can. Thank you. Can I just ask, so do you have thoughts about, um, I mean, you're speaking specifically about the interview, do you have thoughts about board involvement in the hiring process? What did you think about leading up to that point? You know, you know more interviews priority? Well, I, I thought that was going to be a focus, but I'm happy to add another thought, which is just, um, I think that the statute, and again, I was on the board, the state board, Vermont School Board Association when this was changing, and this was a great concern to me that, um, the hiring process was going to be more prescribed. But I think it's more prescribed on the superintendent side 
there, there is nothing that precludes the board from having an interview process that they feel more comfortable with. There's nothing that keeps you as the board from interviewing the top two candidates coming out of the hiring committee. You can't select somebody that the superintendent doesn't bring to you, but you can gather more knowledge on your own if you're interested. Like, I, I believe that, that this is true, this is my recollection, that you have a lot of power to create the policy that makes sense to you when looking at the hiring process. So um, that's an avenue too. I, I was, I remember when the board decided to only interview one person and I, I, I felt that was a huge step backwards. So I mean, geez, if you can bring that back, I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's been our practice up until um, in the spring we were a little bit short um, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hi, Kyle. We are on um, public comments and correspondence. Did you have anything that you wanted to share tonight? Um, not at the moment, no. Okay, great. <clears throat> Approve the minutes of May 1st, 2018 and May 10th, 2018. Can I have a motion? Just a reminder, we do a motion, a second, and then have discussion. So even if you have discussions. Second? second. Brian, great. Discussion on 5.1. Um, I'm just, I've not seen any names of community members in these notes. Is that on purpose? I had the same question. Um, so yes. I had a key, but I think that that may not have been. So I ended up putting initials because I was it was hard to to type quite that fast. Yeah, got that. <laughs> so we had let's see, I'm trying to see where they start here discussion. Page three. <coughs> Actually, that was that was taken out. So that was that was not me. I didn't write a community member. Okay. So I think Chris must have. Um, yeah, he must have thought that was better. Versus the actual. Uh, name? Yeah, so so I ended, I mean, oh. like I didn't know everybody's last name, but I, I tended to put in initials. Mm -hmm. Marilyn, MS. And <laughs> okay. So yeah, I think those were taken out. I guess I'm happy to approve these as is, but I think in general it's good to have community members' names unless they specifically ask. And actually, I don't even think, oh yeah, they are listed. They should definitely be listed as in attendance, right. and they are. Um, I did have an edit on page two, which is the first page of the minutes. Um, it talks about, it begins with Woden's explanation, which I do remember. And then it just says discussion on whether the forum will benefit the community and board. And actually, at that point, Allison had spoken her point of view at length, and I totally understand you were taking minutes, so it would be really hard to capture what you said as mm -hmm. you're writing. However, it impacts the next paragraph. <clears throat> What's written is Caroline may express concern about a small number of people here being a representative sample for the community and concern that opinions of community were asked versus board being asked, and that's inaccurate. Um, the concern was that Woden had shared her thoughts, Allison had shared her thoughts, and then the, uh, the chair, which was Chris, turned to the community asking, and it felt, it was the, um, I guess, lack of structure was my concern, was that we heard from two board members, then we were asking the community versus asking the community at the beginning of the discussion or at the end, but giving board members a chance rather than taking basically the synopsis that you had given as the voice of the whole board. Okay. Do you have a particular way you would like to amend that? I can, I'm trying to pull up the original notes I have because I pretty much wrote down verbatim what everybody said and Chris, reasonably so, found that deeply onerous. Uh, it, and I do remember that it was long. Um, I... Um, did not write how I would prefer it written, so let me think. Um. I guess instead of concern of opinions of community were asked versus board, it was more that 
um, some board members were asked than the community. So maybe that the process of the board's deliberation was not being followed? Or was not clear. Okay, so the process. I don't want to change what was said. Like I want to be really, because you know, now looking at it, I could say a lot of things differently. This is just about sort of correcting the minutes. <clears throat> sure. So if anybody who was there had a suggestion on how to best capture what I had said at that point, If you, I think I, th I think uh, you raised concerns over um, sort of not allowing the board to have the opportunity to share their concerns before. I, at least that's what I took from it before engaging the public. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of was a started started with board and then went to public and then to the, then the board members had to then follow suit rather than it being the opportunity for the board to share their first initial, all their initial reactions. Um, I don't know how you. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly that. how to capture it, but that. Can we, um, if we can give me a couple minutes to find the original of this, I don't have the same computer that I took them on. Yep. Then I can probably help us. And if thing. it's easier, if we want to table it one more time. Um, yeah. Because so with. Perhaps if you, you want to take responsibility for coming up with how to rephrase that. Um, yeah, there were a couple others also, but if Chris edited it in between and you don't have the original. I can find the original, it's just gonna take me a minute. Yeah. Is anybody opposed to tabling 5.1 one more time? No. I just have one other thought um, on page three. Under the paragraph, what is it like the fifth one now? Maybe the group discussed issues involving riding the bus to activities. Parents are not supposed to ride on the buses. Previous principal would permit parents to ride on buses. I understand that that is that was a, what a staff member was saying, and I think um, perhaps a little more complicated than the, the, the staff member articulated. So if we can just ask, say the staff member stated that parents are not supposed to ride in buses and that the previous principal would permit parents to ride on buses. I think that that... I agree. Mm -hmm. It was the opinion of a community member, not the whole group chiming in for that part. Okay. The community member who was, yeah, I would put her name because <laughs> it makes a little more sense, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, so do we want to do all the edits now, and but still table it yes. and come back? OK, so then on page three. Um, Am I, is this, do I fix this and bring it back to somebody, or is, is this being changed like in real time? Sorry. Uh, I, would, I would say <laughs> you. The amateur or the pro? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we got this in the first place. <laughs> I would say you would do it. OK. Um, Okay, so on page three, second page of the minutes, KM, uh, do you see, do you, WT, which is Woden, see the issue as being a 1617? I would just add school year because, um, okay, the way that it's, or, or do 2016 2017, okay. so that people reading the minutes understand what I was asking her. Okay. Oh, it also says that I asked about ongoing community engagement as a board goal and what would engage more parents, and I thought that was Allison. And it could have been that I also said it, but that was a big part of... Mm -hmm. yeah. um, All right, so I have the original document here. <clears throat> um, discussion. It's notably different. Can we move on to something else and mm -hmm. I can... Um... Um, so another, another part of the notes are you talking anything, about? Anything next while well, I can <laughs> attempt to multitask and find what we need here. My only other one was on page four. Um, 
CM, which is Chris McVeigh, notes many strong viewpoints, perhaps a community, period. Yeah, what does that mean? I wasn't sure. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've been watching a lot of Arrested Development lately, and it <laughs> sounded like something that could have come out of there. <laughs> but anyway. Reboot just isn't as, isn't as good. Yeah. Um, the, uh, just above that, um, I'm curious to know what perhaps your original notes had for what I stated. Um, I don't know if I've ever used the word preponderance in my life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I'm pretty sure it was me, sadly. Like. <laughs> um, and I, the, sort of the first half of it is... Um, Which page are you on? I'm on page four, okay. second paragraph okay. down. Sort of the, um, all the way through the... Um, at our last meeting with the, the, with the facilitators. And then that last couple sentences, um, I do recall saying something along the lines of that opening part about not prescribing my feelings on others. Uh, but what, what follows just doesn't really make sense to me. And I have some thoughts of what I said, but I'm not, uh, I think there was a lot of different things that I said at that point in time. And I could try to, give you something, but I'm interested in if there's, uh, if the original notes have, have more. Yep. Okay. I think I was responding in part to, um, a comment from a community member about, um, sort of the insider outsider, um, dynamic and something that the staff member talked about and sort of along those lines. As well. Okay, here's what I originally said. The, uh, so, Woden described what people have asked, not a good idea. Hold on. Lack of parent involvement. Then DL, who is David Three Lawrence, more. brings back a broad view of which sides exist. Um, Brian, the sides thing is hard. He has been through a restorative process and it was powerful. Last meeting it was nice and a good experience, but he did not come out of it feeling better. BT does not meet to prescribe, mean to prescribe his feelings on others, but worry that all needs may not be met or not even a preponderance of those needs. It is mostly just about us being able to try and possibly it, it could make it worse. So that was my best writing down verbatim what you said, but I, I may very well have missed them. And actually um, that's pretty much exactly what it says here. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then I, I So how, how, would, how do you feel? I, like, would just, I would say that um, concerned that, I think one of my concerns all along has had been that um, there wouldn't the, the all the voices wouldn't be in the in the room, so to speak. And so, what um, would we be able to accomplish? What it is that needed to be accomplished uh, with that process? Um, and then also another issue that a concern I've had is that we can't answer certain questions that people have. And so people's needs in that regard for information is not going to be met by the board. Um, so, I don't, so I'm thinking those are the, the um, sort of what I was referring to. Um, I'm not sure about making it worse, to be honest with you. Okay, so <sighs> one of, uh, so BT, one of my concerns all along is that not all voices might be heard and uh, what the process would need to be, and then I kind of lost you there, like to be helpful. Um, I think uh, that we, as, as a board, we wouldn't be able to answer questions from the community. People's need for information may not be met by the board. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so, so just that, that not all, not all voices might be heard and that people's need for information, okay. And then, um, since I'm now writing this down, Carolyn, can I just make sure that I have what would be good for you? I can look it up, the original, if you'd like. But um, the process of the board's deliberation was not clear. So you said something else, like the, that the, I think you had to do with the process of, of discussion within the board before turning it to over to the public? Yes. Um, so, I think I had said that I wanted it really clear when it was time for community involvement and when the board would all have a chance to share their opinion. Okay.
Any other edits on for the May 1st? So can you bring another, put another draft in our next packet? <clears throat> yes. So we'll table the May 1st minutes. We still have a motion for May 10th. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Board discussion, or sorry, discussion 3.1, board retreat, established date and time. Is this the SU <coughs> board retreat? I wasn't at the full. No, well, I think this is our board retreat. That was my understanding. Could the SU board retreat is separate and has its own date? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize we were doing our own. I don't think we, this is something to talk about. So, Actually, so now it's time for discussion. I thought that you asked to be, have it put on the agenda. No. Oh, okay. I, no. <clears throat> it was on the agenda. I expressed concerns about that. Oh. Um, I had requested a retreat last year, and we weren't able to hold one, so. Um, uh, any discussion? Do we want to well, go I'm, around? I'm, um, I'm perfectly willing to go to the board retreat. I think it sounds like a good idea. I would like to have a pretty clear idea of what we would like to accomplish before we um, commit to it. I agree. I, I think being very clear and narrow uh, <laughs> <laughs> in what we hope to accomplish. Um, and I put it out there, maybe it is, um, again, I was, I was not at the meeting earlier tonight, so I don't know what was discussed around Act 46, but how do we, as a board, sort of work um, over the course of the next year, year and a half, right? Um, until potentially it could be a different structure. And what does that look like? Um, I feel like it's more important to have the uh, supervisory union retreat. I would agree to one for us if it was really about looking at how to best transition um, our community from having its own board to being part of a larger board. Allison, any thoughts? I wonder why, like, do, is that just not something that would go on a regular agenda? I mean, not that I'm opposed to a retreat, I just, is it not something that we would put on a regular agenda? Is a retreat there is, longer and more glorious? Yes, so there is benefit, having seen, this was my pitch last year, having seen retreats that are done really well, there's um, sort of a, similar to mediation, like you just are in a very different space and you can talk to get down a little deeper on issues so that you come to where you have common ground and then you build from there and you just have more time to talk out things like vision goals um, in a way that you can't really do at a meeting that has so many items so I in the past have found them to be worthwhile and it makes the board a little stronger So, as far as I can tell, the Act 46, it is what it is, and so now we just have to attempt to meet those requirements? No, this is the recommendation from the, um, from the AOE to the State Board of Education. And so right. nothing, this is not, uh, there's, like Susan said, there's no um, sort of power in this statement at all. It would be whether the State Board accepts or rejects it. So I, I would maintain that it's a bit early. I'm totally willing to do that sort of thinking, you know, if and when um, we do go down that path. I think at this point it's pretty preliminary. So you think there's still a chance that things could be changed? Like my sort of understanding when I saw this, I was like, oh, well. Then. I mean, who knows how realistic it is. But the it, Board of Education is going to accept yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but but it's not. At this point, we are a functioning, um, a functioning revenue board. So, I mean, I would, I would suggest using it as a moment to set our goals, you know, since we were unable mm -hmm. to have that meeting. Um, yeah, I, I, agree I would agree with, with that. With goals. <clears throat> and the other thing that I that I actually wanted to put on the goals that I thought might be kind of nice to have a little more time to talk about is is policy review. I was looking, well, I don't know, a month or two ago at all the policies that we have on the revenue website. And um, there's a lot of them, and many of them are kind of conflicting. And 
um, it felt like maybe a cleaning of the desktop might be helpful to get people sort of to, I don't know, to get everybody a little more aligned, if that's a... Everybody being is our board. Is, is the policy yeah. committee doing something we like that? Yeah, we can absolutely do that. And would it be helpful right now if I give you a brief sense of what the policy committee is doing? Sure, because we're. I can wait. Or yeah, no, no. I mean, I think I'd asked about that, and and and. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it recently in full board, or the um, WCSU board. The policy committee has gone through all the SU policies that are required by the state, mm -hmm. and we have gotten all of those um, as of I think this past couple meetings ago, right? So, so we're all up to date in terms of the state. Now, what we have is a whole bunch of policies from each individual board. Um, that may or may not match up with what VSBA does. And so what, what the policy committee is doing is using the VSBA models as a way to sort of look at what our current policies are. Um, and so we'll get the, the policy model on like community involvement and then they'll, um, Krista, I think, compiles all the existing policies that are the policies of the separate boards and so we have them all to look at together. So we're, we're really doing that as a policy committee um, okay. with the goal of eventually exactly what you said, you know, being okay. totally cleaned up. Um, so there certainly might be room to do that, you know, as a as an army board as well. But, um, but no, a lot we of should let you do the work first. Right yeah. Right now. Okay, so that's being done at a supervisory union level. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any thoughts or comments on the board retreat from the administrators who are here? Um, I think it's your call. Kelly, any thoughts? Community members, any thoughts on the board retreat? All right. So establishing a date and time is everybody okay doing that by email mm -hmm. delegate uh delegate planning is there anybody who would volunteer to plan the retreat how much planning is required here a lot really? <laughs> depending if you share it with like central office who would facilitate um, you would want to plan the location, communicating with the public, um, what the framework would be, the activities, which you will love. There's activities? <laughs> Usually you do like team building kind of thing. We like fall and catch each other? No, you can do it. You can do it around goals. We but don't like time to head crap, do we? But, but. You do, you need to decide if we're oh, like, no, so I for example, <laughs> if one of the, if, hey, here I go. if one of the agenda items is the goals, what protocol are we using to discuss goals? So that then it's, so in that sense, I do think it, it takes some planning. Or did you volunteer? I volunteer. Great. All right. So can you then send out the email about the, the date and time and location can go under planning all okay, of it. So what agenda. I understand is that the agenda right now, and I will, um, is setting board goals. Yes. And that's it? I would agree with that. Great. I will bring a blender. Okay. Uh, and I know Chris had offered to host last time, so if he's interested, I don't want to take it, but if he's not. I do have a hot tub and would host. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> three point two. Someone who wasn't interested in doing this ten minutes ago. <laughs> if we're gonna do it, we gotta do it right. And she's bringing a blender. So um, three point two board involvement. Um, so the agenda item is board involvement in interviewing. But I heard that we want to expand that to hiring process. And we want to take into account um, the public comments that we heard. So let's go around. We'll, can we start with Allison this time? Thoughts on board involvement in interviewing slash hiring process? Sure. So I, you know, taken with a grain of salt because I am still very new at this. Uh, I did kind of wonder, like, what exactly we, you know, what exactly was our role? Like, why, why were we doing this beyond meeting the person? Uh, I wondered if we were stepping on Amy's toes. I wondered if she felt uncomfortable that here we were sort of reviewing her decision. Um, I, I also just had some specific questions, sort of like then I kind of wanted to know, like, well, why was this person picked? And why is this person making more money than this person is? And I wasn't sure what our role, if any, was in asking those questions. And so I thought maybe being silent was best. Um, so I, I guess I, I guess I am really interested to hear, you know, what because ultimately this is your decision to hire people and so do you feel like do you feel put out when we're when we're looking at the candidates that you've brought forth 
I think um, it, my concern is more logistical, quite honestly. Um, our pool at times is very limited. Some positions, it's very variable. Um, I think um, it isn't a decision I make solo. So typically these decisions are met by consensus around a table of involved people. Um, while there may be varying opinions, we do try to um, come to some agreements around around those things. Um, I think that um, given the amount of time that typically goes into these types of things with multiple rounds, um, that if the board wishes to be a part of that, it would be, make more sense to be a part of the whole process. Um, I, I kind of, we had several people that, um, you know, we were in, we'd gone back into the hiring pool three different times um, to try to locate somebody that had kind of a, a complementary skill set for our needs and that we felt like was a good, the best candidate out there. And um, just by the nature of, of board meetings and that type of thing, not only were we pairing a need for them to wait, which was then also creating hardships in other districts, um, so at one point I was hearing from superintendents as to what was going on with this person and you know is are they in or are they out you know because it creates a ripple effect within educational settings. You mean the time lag? Huh? You mean the time lag? Exactly. Okay. So we're creating hardships for other schools which doesn't kind of extend that goodwill. So um, and you know harms other kids because you know they're at a, sh at a disadvantage and getting out for their hiring then too. So um, all that is to just be said that, you know, I, I would welcome your participation on committees. Um, and um, again, it was the delay that created hardships for others, was another layer for many people that was a, a drive from an, a half day commute down for a short interview um, that, they had already come for multiple rounds of, of interviewing. So mm -hmm. I, I think those are the logistical questions that I put forth because I want the best candidates too um, for our kids. So, um, and it is highly variable between jobs. Mm -hmm. um, well, as, far as, as far as the pay differential, that's, that's set by kind of their steps and their level of education and experience. So that's it's, why. Yeah, I figured it was set by a union, but. Yeah. yeah. So okay. just so. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah, no, I just. Yeah, so I guess the thing that occurred to me is also like, well, should we be involved in the whole hiring process? Because it felt a little cursory to mm -hmm. just sort of, I don't know. What are we going to say, no? Yeah, I mean, well, I put out a, and part of it is your availability too. Yeah. I know you guys are very busy. Um, but again, um, I would say that would probably make the most sense for the flow in just making sure that we're securing the right people, the right people in a timely fashion. Um, so I had the same thoughts as Allison, um, the same concerns that Amy brought up with the travel. Particularly interviewing the special ed candidate, we don't vote on that position. That seemed like a big stretch for us to have involvement. Um, uh, what has always been hard for me is um, the interview is one piece of what goes into a hiring decision. And um, so without being privy to all of it, it's really tough to then make the decision. Mm -hmm. So I much prefer having one or two board members um, sort of assigned throughout the year to be part of the search process so they would be on all of them so they know how it works and can hear the whole process and then re report back to the board along with the principal's recommendation seems to be, uh, seems to me to make a lot more sense. Brian? Um, yeah, so I guess since uh, I've been involved with the board and then for a little while when I was minute taker uh, this this kind of question has come up uh, at different times uh, and sort of historically in in my experience um, 
the board was serving uh, as part of the hiring committee, uh, meaning like one or two representatives um, were, were on the committee. I've never felt, you know, comfortable or sort of understood the board having being in that position to just sign off on something that we weren't involved in the process to begin with. Um, but um, I hear, for example, what Sorsha was saying about yeah. our fiscal responsibility. Uh, and I guess my, my feelings along those lines is that uh, we have a team of, you know, experienced educators. I, ideally, there's a, there is a board member on that committee. There's a community member. I mean, we have sort of a representation of the community that's running that process is that we should trust that process, and that's uh, rather than uh, sort of put the fiscal responsibility on ourselves to potentially um, you know, uh, renege on someone, you know, on what the process might have come based on. You know, I'm certainly not an educator, and I don't have that background, uh, and so I I do trust so others. I think everyone who's in that process bring something to it. Uh, and so, uh, I, so I guess where I'm going with this is that I think that uh, if we can get it back into the, to the practice to the extent that's possible of, of having a, a board member or two potentially involved, I think that would be a reasonable solution. Um, I, I, again, along with the special education hiring, I definitely don't see that, what purpose we serve. Uh, in that, and because it is, you know, basically a um, an SU decision, and that's who they work for. Um, so, and then to Amy's point about, I, I, I don't want us to be a poor team player, and that we're thwarting other schools' processes and disrupting. I mean, these teachers are out trying to find jobs, and if we're slowing the process down, and it's not really a beneficial purpose for slowing it down, then I don't know why we would want to do that. So I guess I don't, yeah, I, I see more, uh, I see less value in us being, waiting on us to make a final decision, you know, an, an interview, I should say, versus us being part, just one part of the process. I missed one thing I had wanted to say, do you mind? Um, is I would I would much rather have um, the administration bring us a packet and be able to ask them questions, you know, like who did the reference checks, when were they done, and really ask questions about the process. I feel like that would get us more into um, being able to make an informed decision than meeting the person. Um, and then the other piece about, you know, like the pay and trusting the process, I do wonder if we or maybe it would be more appropriate for the executive committee to look and do some spot checks on how that's done because when we see it as part of the packet, you know, we don't really have a lot of insight. And I yeah. feel like it is, um, you know, in my experience in education, candidates sit with the superintendent who reviews the resume <clears throat> and, and bases it on years in education and, ed and education Year, like years of employment in education and then their um, education to match where they fall, is that ever checked to make sure that there isn't any gender or other bias? I don't know if anybody ever checks it. So as part of our system, that would be something I would look at, but in terms of interviewing. I can speak to that, how that happens. Oh, great, thanks. Um, typically that goes through HR. Sally will do it, and Bill confirms it. Perfect. I mean, it's so they have both eyes are on that. That's when great. They, we, have, we have a non form yep. that we fill out that you see in your board packets, and that's usually filled out typically by the principals. We'll do the mm -hmm. preliminary, and then the HR does the step and the salary. Great. Thanks. The Sally HR? Yeah. She replaced that. Patty she's one. new, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. She's new. Yeah. Well, then. So I'm hearing three different possibilities for involvement in the process. One is on the hiring committee. One is a, a sort of discussion with packets with uh, administrator. And one is the final interview. Is that right? Is that what you all heard? In terms of 
possibilities for you mean the way involved. like one would be going to meetings two is reviewing a packet without being at the yeah. interview meetings and the third is the way we have it and the third is, well the way we have it has traditionally been that there have been board members on the committees i think that this last okay. couple months have been a real exception okay um, so I would like to propose, I think, as the people who have the... Um, that's, the uh, that's been more for our, our unavailability than... At least, the, I mean, I know that this special ed one was our unavailability. There was one other than none of us could do. But then the music, was that? I didn't see a call go out for that one. I would have to go back to my notes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my my intention was I'm sure. that, yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. invitation was extended <laughs> and that we were having various hires, um, you know. And I think that's something to also keep in mind. A lot of times there's concurrent hiring cycles going on, and as new viable candidates come up, if we ha if the committee has not seen kind of a good match, it's possible to wait on it a week, reconvene. So I mean, just be aware of that level of involvement mm -hmm. if you know you go that direction is you know we may can it's not always neat and pretty mm -hmm. in that you know the first time you really convene the group everybody's available you've identified your date nothing is found so you have to go back in a week and a half sure. you reconvene as much of the group as you can so um, um, so I just think it's helpful to identify those three possible steps of involvement. I think as people who are, you know, as the group that's legally responsible for the hiring, we should have at least some involvement. Um, I think being involved in the hiring process makes the most sense. I think people are willing. I'm a little concerned about having two, one or two people responsible for all of the hires in a year. That seems maybe um, like a fairly heavy burden. Um, but I think if we can all commit to, you know, at least one, uh, how many do we, I guess maybe there is no typical that sort of dividing up labor, I think that that could, could work quite well. Um, I'm not totally committed to the interview. It was interesting that one of our candidates said how much yeah. she appreciated that. That was um, not what I expected. Um, and I would just finally like to, I mean, we're not going to vote on this tonight, but I would also like to hear what Chris has to say, because I think this is important. Enough, so. mm -hmm. Great. I think um, it might be nice if, I really like the idea of being involved in the actual, the interview process. Um, but it might be nice once new hire, like as sort of a part D subset of C, instead of interviewing the person as a stamp of approval, perhaps once they're hired, they could be invited to the next board meeting. How's it going? Let's get to know you more personally. You met this person who was on the committee, but now meet all of us. Mm -hmm. That might be a nice compromise between. Mm -hmm. and, it wouldn't feel so. and some um, some boards have like a personnel committee mm -hmm. and whoever's on that committee like policy is a committee, whoever's on the personnel committee goes to all the interviews. Mm -hmm. So it is a big undertaking, but usually the person who volunteers for it has either the time or the desire to do it. Other thoughts, administrators? I can just share that <coughs> my understanding is the only board that does this and that particularly with special education, where there's potential to lose candidates in a really challenging position to fill, when we have to wait a couple weeks for them to come and meet with you. Um, and it has the potential to put us in some precarious situations and not end up with qualified staff. So I'll just put that out there too. Did uh, board members watch the executive committee meeting where they discussed it? Mm -hmm. Um, it just speaks to what Kelly said. It was a discussion. It came out that Middlesex was the only one still using it, and it just had information from people who, I don't know, aren't part of our board and our dynamic. So it was interesting. All right, community members, anybody want to say something about that before we move on? I just thought it was interesting the point you brought out about the, deciding the salary piece, too, that. It sounds like for a lot of them it is kind of plug in a number, but um, I think there are some situations like if the board has just created a new position where there might be some discretion in that or there might be negotiations and I think it's important for the board to be a part of that so you don't lose a really good candidate yeah. uh, during that stuff. Great. <clears throat> Um, staff board relations and communication. Does anybody know 
yeah, specifics this about this? Yeah, important to me, and I wanted to bring it up now. Um, I, uh, a number of us have talked about the need for multiple sources of information in coming to the board. Really appreciate your reports, appreciate mm -hmm. Bill, um, but also creating other um, sources of information. So we have a very full picture coming from a lot of different stakeholders, um, and one of them is the staff. Um, and so I would like to propose I don't have a model to propose, but I would like to propose that I go off and identify, you know, four or five different models that other schools are using and um, bring them back and we can talk about them. That they are using for connecting with staff, for building for relationships? Yeah, for communicating with staff, yep. And then creating relationships with staff, so. Great. What's I would just, yeah, add, um, Sorsha brought up a really good point about the relationship being a uh, priority mm -hmm. so just sort of tweaking what you're looking into with the focus around building a strong relationship between staff and board yeah so um, well i think hopefully with multiple models we'll be able to tap into great a yeah i thought having our kindergarten teachers come was a oh, highlight was nice. and it was so nice to see what they've been doing what they thought was going well how it integrated with some of amy's plans it gave me a much better picture of what was happening and frankly it made actually Amy's report on sort of how the school was doing generally it it gave it a quite a bit of, of meaning it made made more sense so that was really nice and I was wondering too like we just invite teachers <laughs> can you come and and tell us what's what's going well what's not going well I don't know if they would be willing but they used to well why don't um, I'll be happy to be a clearing house for any ideas people can send them to me you know community members as well um, you should look into, I don't know who you would necessarily contact, but Chelsea Public School did a lot around community engagement and uh, connecting with staff. And I'm remembering little invites. We had a logo, like a lot of work was done around it. So they might have some ideas. It's K-12. Is, um, since, since this is your thing, Wood, and this, is the intent of this to in part, um, obviously, fostering stronger relationships, but to prevent the um, kind of the end around engagements that board and staff are have having now that's you know, not necessarily um, healthy? I mean, I, well, I mean, I think that we, we need more sources of information than we have. So communication is definitely a key piece of this for me. You know, and you may, I know that we have differing opinions on that, and that's why I'm proposing that I go off and find a bunch of models. If anybody wants to join me there. Um, but yes, it is to get direct communication with staff members. Okay. Anybody have thoughts? Administrators? I, I think it would be great to have more highlights. That's been kind of an area that I've been interested in cultivating is we have little showcase pieces, you know, to bring to the board just for awareness. Um, also, students showing their work, I think, is, as I've seen other boards work, um, is a great way to have some deeper insight that's even, whether you have kids on, in the school or not, you know. So, totally happy to um, supply that kind of triangulation or facilitate it, rather. So. Great. Thanks. Community members, any thoughts? Matt, any genius ideas? No, sorry. All right. <laughs> um, start budget discussion for 2019, 2020, 3.5. Anybody? I guess we can table that. Can you actually, can somebody help me? Like, I did not even know where to start with this. And I, I know during the campaign, I attempted to look into budget issues completely over my head. Like I didn't even know what the lines meant. I didn't know where to get information on what does this line mean. So can I, like resources would be, like, where do I find this? Is there a Lori school Bebo budget for dummies? Office. What? Lori Bebo, our central office. Yeah, so set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe after the closing of this call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I think after we had June. wanted. After July 1. After July yeah, 1. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the, the we had wanted this on here so that we didn't get to October, November with a rough draft and not have an idea of what we wanted in terms of, um, you know, like a percentage of increase. I'm not feeling like I can really focus on that right now. Does anybody mind if we table it? 
I don't think we can do much without goals. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I ask a question about that? That's one reason that I... Yes, please. Because it came to my attention that, that goals didn't make it onto many agendas this evening somehow, including Dodie's. Um, <laughs> and uh, not to be Mr. Goal Fanatic, but, uh, you know, I, I, as I've stated many times probably, the, um, you know, the sort of unity of the school system behind declared goals is something that's very important to me as an administrator in my own work. Um, and also, I think, in the current climate where the case is trying to be made that we are divided and we can't coordinate well together, um, it seems particularly important to me that we think about those. So I just came to humbly plead that you might consider them. But it sounds like you have some other kind of plan in place for doing goals. Or we did have, and we added 3.6. Uh -huh. oh, which was goals, oh, I see. Okay. but we were going to make sure that we got through our action agenda yeah, before yeah. we moved on. We're, but we're um, and we have the SU goals, the WCSU goals that have been put out, and part of the discussion will be: Do we use those as a starting off point? Do we want to just adopt those? Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, report to the board. Did anybody have questions on the administration report, which is in the um, supervisory union packet? <clears throat> and did you have anything to add? Yes. That was my next point. Go ahead. Um, so as you can see, we're doing a lot of um, cool setup for next year and um, really pulling together to do some thinking about restorative practices and um, and those types of ways that we um, kind of support um, students' motivation and learning. Um, so we've also been uh, looking at some different ways to like share some of the responsibility around some of the social emotional learning. So it's really pulling in some of the tier one uh, kind of instruction around executive functioning and um, some of those things that sometimes will block kids from being as successful as they might. And this is kind of an area that I, I really do feel like is cutting edge and people aren't maybe using the windows that we've got available to us in elementary school um, to, to the optimum levels. So I'm excited to see what the team comes up with. Um, I did want to let you know that we've had an adjustment to our playground plan. And I'll be um, making personal phone calls tomorrow um, as well as sending out a message um, just that we're going to postpone the installation till the middle of July and we're going to let Northeast Playgrounds really take the lead on that and use volunteers for some of the smaller aspects of the installation. I want to ensure that it's installed correctly as we really got into mapping out the planning with um, the kind of oversight committee it became clear that the level of tools were very specialized uh, not something you've got out in the garage, li likely, um, you know. Was that the list that was sent out to us? Uh-huh. And um, along with that, their availability was limited to Father's Day weekend. And, you know, I think it's a hard ask oh. to ask for two days to <coughs> a variety of people. It's just um, when we started crunching the numbers between them covering the cement, if they do the install, um, versus us paying it out, me paying Nate overtime for being there for two days um, after he's worked the whole week, um, as well as the risk to us not having a deep well of experience mm -hmm. in a volunteer crew in installing playgrounds. Um, I, I feel like we're in better hands to go this route and just postpone it and have a nice celebration at the start of school with ribbon cutting and voila. Um, that would still allow for some community engagement as well as participation around it, but it's just the timing really, I think, just got crunched. So with their availability and, of course, even that weekend was not for sure based on rain um, with other projects either. So um, that's kind of how that's looking right now. Um, just wanted to kind of keep you apprised of what went into that decision making. And Amy, so is there an additional cost then if they're taking more of a, and, and what's the difference? Yeah, it's a $2,000 cost, but when you subtract out the cement, as well as considering Nate's overtime, 
um, I think that it's you know pretty reasonable um, to move this direction. So. And then the other thought I had was, you yes. know, as I looked at um, two days volunteer with no kids available, like that's just yeah. really hard to do. And it so, I, you know, it may be possible to find someone or um, raise some money to hire some teenagers to, to babysit. Yeah, you know, with yeah. Kids. I'm very far away, but it just, you know, that that's a that's a kind of a deal breaker for me, and I yeah. have a lot of families. Well, and that's why I feel like the level of volunteering that we're looking at, which is putting in the borders, moving the mulch, that type of thing, as well as building the Gaga pit and volleyball posts, that kind of thing, that stuff kids can be around. But when okay. we've got heavy equipment moving, and it just worried me. And, you know, kids that, of course, want to help. You, know, it, you do make a good point because Wolfie has gotten into the grinder at home, which was one of the required tools, and I will say things did not go well, and it was shockingly <laughs> fast, like shockingly fast. So, so it's probably. Yeah. I mean, no, a lot of those tools were. Yeah, I was kind of taking score. I was like, oh, we yeah, have this, but would we? Can somebody use it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah. So, and I, that was the other aspect. I just like that breakage as well as it's a lot of heavy lifting, mm -hmm. and I sort of worry about the risk there too. So I think this level of participation and pulling together will be just right because it could be extended over several evenings and come for a couple hours, hang out, play on the playground kind of thing. So, so just to be clear, the difference between having um, community members do it over one weekend with supervision and the, and having somebody do it in there totally was two thousand dollars was approximately two thousand dollars so two thousand dollars for like 15 people's labor but then for two you days? subtract out when nate calculated out how much the cement was going to be just that aspect was going to be five hundred dollars in the quote for them doing it they cover that so no I mean, i'm just like shocked that yep. 15 people for two days was like two thousand dollars savings that seems yeah, well, they're also extending it over a longer period of time, which made me also concerned when I started comparing numbers that perhaps they were being overly optimistic about it taking a crew of volunteers two days. Mm -hmm. So I, um, you know, if the professionals, if it's gonna take them three to four. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I think it's a safer and um, better option for us without the loss of an opportunity for people to feel ownership around helping. Thanks. <clears throat> uh, fiscal? Yeah. Any questions of what was in the packet? Any updates, Amy? I do. Um, so there's three items I want to kind of draw your attention to. One is the utility savings at um, 24000 something. Uh, Remind me what page one. Five. I'm sorry. Hmm? Remind me what yeah, page is Yeah, page 26. In addition, uh, we got a rebate on our student transportation, uh, which the district then um, funneled back to the schools. And then finally, um, the school-wide close-down savings, which is typically related to um, uh, staff salaries and that type of thing. So that um, savings was $34,980. Um, and that will be finalized in the the final figure will be um, arrived at at the August audit, um, so you'll hear about that in September. Um, I I would say the the one thing I'm just going to surface is that I've had a request from teachers to um, actually have some help with building up their classroom libraries, and um, that's been an area that they haven't. We focused, as you remember, earlier in the year and did a rebuild of some of the small group instruction type of libraries, but really the classroom libraries also are needing a little bit of uh, freshening up. And um, I'm wondering if the board would consider allowing us to act on that sooner rather than later, as we also have math that's kind of breathing in the wa waiting in the wings uh, for fall. Um, if we couldn't maybe consider utilizing uh, a portion of the 32,000 for building up classroom libraries. What do you project the rough cost to be to do that? Um, I think to just get started, it would require $1,000 per, per classroom. actual classroom. So is that so 10,000? I would say nine to 10,000 okay. would be what I would request. 
course, I'll take anything that you're willing to um, consider. But that was something that surfaced out of our discussions today um, in staff meeting as we were um, considering kind of um, supplies and our best ways to kind of arrive at um, those budgets so, and to meet the needs that they're seeing. Um, I wonder about possibly doing like a wedding registry for each classroom. For, you know, parents when they come to the end of the year gift and they're kind of like not sure what to do, could mm -hmm. then go to Christine Babcock's site and buy her, you know, the corduroy or whatever. And then use the, um, the funds to supplement anything that doesn't come in. I, I don't imagine we'll get a lot of it, but we might get cord. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's a great idea. A lot of um, schools will do that through their, um, you know, like book um, sales, that kind of thing, like with Scholastic, which, you know, doesn't always offer the highest quality right now. I think the challenge is, is that we've got this um, cluster. I, I think I spoke to you and Matt spoke about the difficulty finding good fits for those early readers, and those aren't typically things that we can get on Amazon. So. But I also think that there could be a place for us to say, hey, parents, we're trying to build our classroom libraries. Would you consider this? Um, would be fine. Um, something I did when I was a classroom teacher and mm -hmm. had the kids sign each book. And you know, it was a nice little reminder of the year together. So um, anyway, just something to consider. I, I thought it would surface that faculty concern. When are you looking for a decision? Uh, tonight, because Lori Bebo has told me that if I if I wish to use that money, I need to have it spent on Friday. Oh, Friday, not June 30th. Okay. So, um, um, even a portion, I think, could get us started with some some. Um, they're expecting it to be a multi-year thing, and having said that, in my own like at ideal levels, it was twelve hundred books in my classroom library. That really took it to, you know, make a, a really robust reading program run. So that's what we're building toward. It's not what I'm asking for tonight. I mean, we're talking about books for kids, and from my point of view, we were looking to spend three thousand dollars on a community forum. I can't imagine not putting all, all money I can towards imagine books. Is your sign <clears throat> that we said we should put up. We should ask each question like, how does this affect kids? What is the impact? Yeah, how how will the decision we make tonight impact kids? Well, I was, what I wanted to look at uh, in your budget form was I knew that we were over the four percent threshold of um, sort of basic reserve funds uh, available, and strongly recommended that you have four percent. And we haven't had anything. It's been a while since we've been around those numbers, so we're about $6,800 actually over that. Um, so I, I feel like there is some some room to, to spend some money. I don't know if it's the, all the 6800 or not, but um, I don't know what other needs that we don't know about yet that might also play a factor in that, but I think that's at least a, a starting point. So this was one bit of feedback I got from a teacher, just so you kind of know current status. She said, good fit, this is a first, second grade teacher, good fit nonfiction books in her range that she teaches, um, because she's stated that a lot of her nonfiction books right now are really too hard for them to read, so they just dabble and look, and there's a place for that, but she wants some that sh they can actually read. Fiction books that are short but engaging. Several teachers talked about how a lot of the um, the reads that they have may be not the high interest for the reluctant reader. Um, I have some of these, but they're old and not super interesting to kids, is her quote. Thoughts? So just let, so I'm clear, how much money do we have to work with and what are the other expenses? That the, yeah, that's the, the, um, the plumbing, has that been done? And that we had the propane tank issue too, didn't we? I believe all the POs for that work are in the boiler, you mean? And <coughs> we have not, well, we've assured that that's been set aside. You're talking about the under the floor, yeah. 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 
Okay, so that's taken care of. Well, it, it's could probably it most likely is going to hit your capital budget, yeah. not your general budget. It's six, it's about eighty three hundred dollars that'll hit the capital budget. You're right; the POs have been done. I remember saying, "Let's put this to the capital budget." Okay. Brian, thoughts? I shared mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember. So you might hear three going around. Uh, Allison, I don't know that we heard from you on this. Oh, I, I, I mirror Brian's sentiment. Like I kind of want to know exactly how much we have to play with, and I would say that seems like an awfully worthy cause. About the best there is. Our literacy numbers were not, you know, we want them to go up more. So. So. Am I hearing that what Brian and Allison are saying is to use the six thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars and make that the amount? I mean, it, it feels like we don't have that earmark for anything else at this point, right? And it's. I mean, this is my second year on the board, so I don't know how much we need to be aware of. So you need to be aware of that 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 four percent is just an arbitrary percentage. There's not, I wouldn't be doing what, I wouldn't be cutting the line the way you are. Um, I would say if Amy has needs, we should try to find those within, you can see there's some savings from shutdown right there that go into that total bottom. So we could authorize her to spend that. The auditor will not like us to do that right now at the end of this year. You will see an exception. Would not like us to do what? To go spend money this year's budget for next, next year of work. Because that's going to look like anything you buy from about May 15th on, they're like, yeah, you're just spending down the budget and you're not really going to use it this year. You're pre-buying. Um, it's a known tactic. Which is why Friday, would kids touch the books before June 3rd, June 20th? It's possible. <laughs> that's what you have to prove. It's like kids touch the books. Yeah. <clears throat> but I do hear you, Bill. <clears throat> so if you wanted to set aside money to for say... For next year. Go ahead and buy that for the beginning of next year. You could do that, and you could do that now too. I think it's good for the board to say we recognize um, this is where we're at, and we want to ensure that some supplies are used out of where we are with the funding, you know, to support learning or whatever project it is. I don't want to just single out this project. Um, so now that I'm not a principal, I just want to say it's always interesting so I, the like auditors not liking something versus something being. So here's Illegal. something. Well, there, there, there's very little. There's a lot more that goes against general gap, uh, generally accepted counting principles. Yep. Than there is in the legality, and where it goes there is then you start to go down the fraud road, mm -hmm. and that's how you can get into the legal. And so it's better if one of the things that helps us a lot is that that we show we have a system where we follow our procedures and our practices. So if we were to purchase something now which is not allowed in our procedures to do, and that was found, they're gonna say, so how tightly Bill or Lori in charge of the financial systems do you keep people within the procedures? So would we, Got be, it. So would we be at, in, out of step with the procedures then? No, not well. This is where the board authorization helps out. Like we're saying, hey, we want you to go spend this money on this because that money's already in there. You see it at the sorry, I don't have my glasses on, but it's so like you, seven thousand nine hundred dollars, and we move money in between lines all the time to do things. But you need authorization because it's between May and June. I don't. It's it's because we're shutting down right now. Once we hit shutdown, which starts the end of April finishes like by May 15th, yep. we're trying not to spend any, our practices around this SU for years, well before I was here, but definitely through the 22 years that Lori has been here, is we don't spend, we encumber stuff in POs and say we plan on spending this yep. on, June, on June 20th and that's okay. We don't make decisions to spend yep. after May 15th. Well, because that looks that. like, and so having the board say, okay, we would like to have this money reserved to to, for this expense, uh, the, the projected, because you're in projected fund balance right now, your projected fund balance is much higher than your actual fund balance. So you can't, your board, your town is only giving you authorization to spend your actual fund balance. This won't make a difference, but I just want to make sure that what you see on the bottom is a projection. Mm -hmm. Your only fund balance you actually know is what's at the top. 
that 107. This is, and Laurie has done this for years, is trying to keep the boards informed about what the projection is going to be. Okay. I don't think, it, and with Laurie's good work, that's never off more than a couple thousand dollars, because she's that good at what she does, and, and with her team. So, um, this is not my forte, so I'm trying to understand this. Um, if the, what happens come July 1st? We, so what happens July 1st, we don't know until about September 1st mm -hmm. what the actual audited fund balance will be. And once we know what that is, let's say it goes from the 107 up to 107,000 to 133,000, then that 133,000 is available. It was 107 before. And so you could, you could do it then, you could do it now. I'm not trying to stop you from doing it. I just want you to hear the knowledge of the, the way the finances work here. Mm -hmm. And so, the, and having you tell us to go do something right now or reserve it for July 1st or even spend it now, that helps us with the auditors say, hey, the board saw this as an important project and told us to go do it. Where we usually in our practices don't, we're not, we're not committing to something to spend after May 15th. So what you're saying is that as long as the board authorizes it, it won't be an issue. With the issues if you guys just did it on your own. Right. We yeah. And it may not be a audit exception, but it may be a recommendation. You need to be tighter on your procedures. To you, if you guys did it on your own versus if we. Yeah. Okay. I don't really. See well, the even is. even us doing it though, you feel it sounded like at the beginning you were saying to be careful because we were getting right down. No, what I'm saying, I just want you to understand there is, you were literally cutting dollars down to 4%. And I want you to understand that 4% is somewhat arbitrary. arbitrary yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yep. got it. It's, it's, uh, it's literally this. Mm -hmm. It's not anything, you know, how would you get that to be a real number? You'd start to say, so how many, what's the potential for a number of students that might be high cost special education? What would their net cost be to us? What's the potential for the most major system to fail in Romney? Right now, it's the oil boiler. You know, what's that cost? You know, where do you have money in the back? You, you got to do this risk analysis. Mm -hmm. For $6,000, I don't think it's much of a risk. Yeah. Um, but I just want you to understand that 4% is not a hard line. Yeah. But it's when you were down where you were 23 at the beginning of the year, and you heard it from me, I was like, yeah, I'm a little worried for us. It's a little thing. So this feels okay to me. We are at, we are not at May 15th, and if we make a decision, apparently that makes it. I mean, I feel like we're meeting all the criteria for if Amy feels like we, she needs money for books, we can approve that. Are we, does anybody see any problems with this? I mean, the only problem I have is feeling like if a decision is based because, because we have money, we'll use it. Like using, <clears throat> like if you budget for something and then you spend it just because it's there. Mm -hmm. But this sounds to me, for me, it's hearing from the teachers last week about those um, book yeah. boxes. That was huge. It was. And um, that was one grade level. So now hearing that the whole staff shared similar things, it feels like it's, it's a need and we're finding a way to make it work versus we have this money and we're deciding how best to use it. Does that make sense? much more critical in the earlier grades, right? And then, you know, for a sixth grader, like, it's not as hard to go to the library, right? You don't need the classroom lines. That's where I went in my thought process based on our kind of previous discussions. Um, today, as we sort of fleshed that out, it was interesting to just hear kind of teachers' perspectives. Um, one of my third and fourth grade teachers actually went back and surveyed her kids, which I loved. Um, and she asked them, you know, what do you think of our library? And they identified gaps. Um, they also told her that she had the nonfiction organized wrong, <laughs> which I loved. Uh, so, you know, I think the reality is, is um, as I was trying to trim kind of where our focus is to make the biggest impact, I was hearing from my five, six teachers, they're like, yeah, they could go into the library and get stuff, and sometimes I think they're just going into the library to just take a little mini field trip kind of thing. 
So they were they were also advocating for perhaps building an in classroom library. Um, I think it certainly how we end up slicing that as a staff, um, you know, will probably be slanted towards those early grades where you can't just fill it at Scholastic or um, go and pick something out of the library. Um, so it won't be exactly equal. I'm just, as far as the dollar amount, just because the types of resources in the early grades cost more. So um, So to that point, is, is the library, if the library is the, uh, the outlet for the upper grades mm -hmm. primarily, what's, what's the status of of the books there. Well, I think what we have to realize is that there's differing purposes for library books versus independent reading books or books that are utilized within classroom time. I would encourage every child to have at least one book going from our school library every week. And, you know, that's a great connection point to home. Um, it gets, gives long extended reads, it allows for the older kids. But they also need, as Matt was pointing out, this like chunk of books that are in their book box that are accessible for during their reading time. Because so, the teachers aren't connecting the students with the library books. Right, and, and it's important for them to get to like, choose, like follow their fancy there, mm -hmm. you know? And they still can in the classroom, but it's, it's just, um, you know, the library books, that they check out, they can be taken home and mom can read them or dad can read them at bedtime. An older sibling could read them. They could just book browse. But our time during our literacy block, we expect them to be actually practicing the thing. And there's quite a few grades that that wouldn't be my go-to place to get just right books for them. Um, and read-alouds are super important um, for just building an understanding of literary features and interests in a lot of topics. So, um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, reading, it's the reading to learn versus um, learning to read thing. Do I have a motion? So, you said $1,000 per room, $9,000 to $10,000 was your total request. That was my ballpark. I, I can adjust if you guys want to be more conservative. I totally understand that. And I'm going to be trans, there's math needs brewing um, that I don't want to ignore, but I felt like this was an opportunity to actually surface that teacher voice um, in what they were asking for. Well, I admit where I ran with a discussion of a playground came up, I probably would have fought to not actually improve a playground, <laughs> but books, you got me there. If you, I, I would move to spend $10,000 uh, for books for our classrooms, as designated by the principal's request, as so, Allison, just so we're clear, we've got the six thousand seven eighty three. That's kind of the obvious number sitting here. You'd like to do more consciously? Yes. Do I have a second? I want second. a second for the purpose of discussion. Yeah. Discussion. Um, I'm happy to go to the to six seven eight three. I'd rather stick at the four percent. Um, with the understanding it's an arbitrary number, but a useful one. I'm, uh, I would vote uh, in favor of the motion, keeping it at 10. <laughs> oh, nobody else had comment? Sorry. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so on page nine, <clears throat> it's pretty clear. We are approving. Um, we need an authorization to approve Dorinda Corwell, the Middlesex Town Treasurer. Do I have a motion? I'm so moved. Second? Yeah. Moden, thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we need to sign and date. Do we have? 
and I will pass it around. There is also a place in here for just Allison to sign as the clerk, the board clerk. Don't forget to pass it back to Allison. We all, there's like three pages for everybody and a special spot for Allison. Uh, 5.2, award revenue anticipation note, page 10. <coughs> this is about the bid. Do I have the motion? Woden, thank you. Second, Second. from Allison. A Discussion? Quick, yeah, quick question. Uh, Bill, we, were we previously with merchants and that's They've changed their name. I know. I know. Well, they've been bought out. So I just—that's what I meant. So we were with merchants. Okay. I do not remember the current their name. Community bank. Community bank. Yeah. yeah. So one it's of the so, two. Okay. So we're I don't not changing. One it is. I don't think we're changing. I think yeah. we're in the same bank. Yeah. Lori would have told me that. I was going over this last week. Anything we need to know about this though? Uh, it makes you money. <laughs> but it, it, it's not complicated. It's not complicated. It's something you need for your taxes. And yeah. It's a somewhat pro forma piece. Okay. Otherwise, we will be out of money on July 1st. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 5.3, award investment bid. Isn't that the same thing? Or there are two it's on the same page, you, you do, you and we need a separate. You're doing different documents in the... the Auditor and the bank like to see two separate motions, one for investment and one for the note. All right. Can I have a motion for the award investment bid? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5.4, approve first reading of D3, Rumney School Principal Preservation Policy. Do I have a motion? I'm going to table this until Chris is here and gets his baby. Good idea. Second. I don't think we need to vote on moving it, tabling you don't, it. You don't for tabling. But I do have a question. Um, Bill, it's listed here as a first reading, mm -hmm. and on our last agenda, it was a discussion item, yep. and Precise. we weren't going to vote on it because it wasn't a Right. an action item and now it's listed as first reading yeah. is there a difference in terms of something being a first reading does that mean that we you're just reading it means that you're um you're taking action that you've read it um technically probably not much of a difference um so say there was a board member that didn't want this policy to exist does having it listed as a first reading make it more difficult to have it Disappear? No, the way you're going to make it disappear is when you go for uh, adoption. So you do nothing until that stage. We don't vote it down after oh, first reading down, to you not. You can do whatever you want. You can vote it down or. You can do, you can do it wherever you want. Or that's, approve to move it on at any stage. Gonna, I mean, we've changed to this way of making sure because we've had some times in the past where people have challenged us, uh, did you actually have a first reading? And we said, okay, we're, and this was a couple years ago, and Chris had just said, you know, this will make it a lot easier if we just record a vote. Okay. That you had your first reading. Great. Appoint representative to the negotiations committee. Are there any nominations? Does anyone want to do it? I was going to say, I, you know, I would be willing, but the timing is impossible for me. Yeah. And negotiations is usually long. Uh, is it up this year or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're talking big commitment. Big commitment? Yes. And it's specifically time. during like the 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock and onward time frame. Is that right? And, you know, and then towards the end, it goes yeah. till. In the past, it's gone long. It's usually four. It's usually a lot of two to three hours. They set the schedule and everyone comes together. Yeah. Can you tell me exactly after school hours. what this is about? Is this negotiation? Yep, for the teacher's contract. Probably one of the most important things the board does. And when, during what time period of the year do these negotiations happen? It depends on the year. We've started, sometimes we start in September, some years we start in December. It's when both parties are willing to come. 
It, it usually lasts time. five to six months. And it right. can go anywhere from a couple of months to... Did you sign these? Uh, in my time here, we haven't gone past May. In the past, Chris has served as the alternate. Yeah, in the past for you, it's either been Lowry or... Um, I forget. Beth, Beth, Beth was. was. Yes, <laughs> Beth was a very, very... She was very good at it. This is something that I could potentially do December, January, and February, maybe March. So we have we have a rule that's agreed upon. That everybody stays at the end. No, that er whoever starts, starts, but no one can come in and sub for you. Right. So you can't, if you if you can't, and if you miss a meeting, you just miss a meeting. That's just, that's usually, and that has been in the ground rules the past three times, because mm -hmm. it, it's, they've had experience where people came in and out of conversations with different people, and it's like restarting yeah. everything. And especially in the IVB process. If we I'm not table, to discourage you, no, yeah, I just, just want to be yeah, once we get into May. If we table that till Chris is here, because if Chris was willing and wanting, none of us would need to. Would it um, hurt the committee to not have a Middlesex member? Right now, it is not. Um, there is some. There's some hope that things might start early. Okay. I can't say more. We could try technology and see if he's available. Or is that not allowed? Uh, I don't know. Do 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 let let's call him. Chris, it's your meeting. Chris! <laughs> We're after you. We could nominate him and have him <laughs> decline <laughs> if he didn't want it. <laughs> 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 it's only 30 hours. There is a bad connection. You said yes. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting, was there anything else that the community members wanted to share or say before the end of the meeting? <coughs> Kyle? So on the, um, you go first. No, go um, on the future agenda, or I guess when is the next meeting? Because I am wondering about the uh, Act 46 stuff, because you talked about having a meeting later this month. Yeah. and. It, but this board is not going to meet before then, right? Uh, so generally, this is it, and we try not to meet in July. I don't. Sit, I'm not going to presume much with what's going on with 46, and then they usually come back in August. That's been our pattern, Kyle. That's the best I can. I want to say. I don't want to speak for the board. But I am going to be organizing a board retreat, um, and it sounds like that may or may not be a topic of conversation at that point. I'd like to do it sooner than later. That makes sense, yeah. Do the retreat sooner than later? I mean, essentially, like the AGS proposal that every board agreed to is a policy document, and the AOE's opinion of it does not rescind that policy. Um, so that remains our position, essentially, until we decide differently. <clears throat> so I wouldn't expect that, like, the district boards need to, and everybody, maybe people, the, the, the Doty board will meet it. At the state board, yeah. this, all but, the boards have said your position. And I guess I just felt like the this, this is sort of what the state had wanted all along. So the agency of education was our best shot, but I could be wrong. You know, I, I don't know. I, mean, I can't claim to be any kind of team if we are politics. I really don't know. I mean, I think you're probably right. I think the state board. You know, as more and more um, appointees of the current governor yeah. as time passes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's going to be a difficult train to derail, I think. Um, but, you know, again, we, we've made our position very clear um, and unified across our school system. And it's our job to, to uh, defend that to the best of our ability. Um, and I think that may be what the 
do, you know, sort of what's the cost benefit of different kinds of you know, spending you can do, but, but really it is talking to the state board at this point because the decision lies with them. Um, so, you know, we can do other stuff if we want to get creative or weird. You didn't get him? Didn't get him. All right, I'm going to table it then. It's just hard to predict. I, I just wanted to say, I have some things to say about it because of early vision policy, we tabled it, but so I don't need to say them, but, uh, but that would be the other reason I came to the meeting. So. Do you want to say them? Yeah, you can say them. I mean, For my benefit, what is it? First. It is. Um, <clears throat> It is a policy that a board member put forth um, a little over a year ago <laughs> that would give the board more involvement in decisions regarding the principal. Um, we got, we paid and got advice from our attorney who advised against it. Um, and we have a board member who still wants to move forward. Does that summarize? Yeah, I mean, we had conflicting advice from the state, um, from the BFBA attorney who said it was illegal, and our attorney who said it was legal, that he advised against it. What, well, Matt, go ahead. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I can do it at the next meeting. Yeah, I mean, I was, I first came across this in a, uh, an executive committee packet on um, about the policy committee. You know, I was a little, I'm not often alarmed by something I would see in a board packet, um, but I, I was alarmed by this um, for, for a few reasons. Um, and I guess I should say again, you know, I've served on boards, um, but I also am an executive director who reports to boards and has served, you know, more for the boards as an administrator. Um, so I had a very, maybe, sensitive or overdeveloped appreciation for like roles and responsibilities between like, the board and the executive. Um, and I guess so there, there was four things that kind of really, as I thought about it more and more, like, it became a real problem with this. Um, you know, the first is my understanding is that it's, um, it's, it's possibly what I would call like quasi-legal is sort of my reading of the, what I read it, the legal comments that were on it, that, um, you know, it, it conflicts to some extent with existing state statutes, um, that, you know, it may be within the board's purview to pass it anyway, or, or that there's some gray area there. Um, but in my experience, when boards take decisions in, in gray areas of the law, it is increasing the risk of, of lawsuits, essentially, because you're just creating space where people can say, well, this isn't clear, or the law says this, and the policy says this, and they're not like in sync with each other. Um, so that's just one sort of practical um, um, consideration. The second is one I alluded to earlier, which is that um, you know we essentially have a uh, policy across ESU about hiring and firing and the role of the superintendent in that process. Um, and so to have a district that you know, sort of intentionally takes a divergent path on such a critical issue um, seems to me both um, bad policy, sort of from an organizational standpoint, um, and also at this particular moment in time, um, exactly the kind of thing that I think, you know, that AOE and the state board and the people that are trying to claim that that the kind of system we have can't work uh, are looking for. Um, and in fact, I, I, would, I would go so far as to use the term radioactive um, for, for this. Uh, I think the state would really just see it that way. They'd just be like, these guys, there's no way that, that this is, they're working together on this. Um, the other two issues are, are one is that, um, you know, the, Hiring and firing is one of the most critical responsibilities of the executive that we hire. Um, and for the board to be meddling in that or to be curtailing or trying to modify that ability in some way or control it 
is essentially, for all intents and purposes, a, a vote of no confidence um, in your executive. Um, and it's okay if that's your sentiment, and you know you should sort of do something about that. Um, but I would argue this isn't the way to express um, a sense of no confidence in the executive. There are ways to do that. Um, this isn't it. Um, and then the last thing I would say is that it really sends a, a disturbing signal, I think, uh, and a ripple effect across the system that I'm not sure is crystal clear, um, you know, on its face, which is that you're essentially signaling to um, people that work for the superintendent uh, that they are not actually accountable to him or her uh, in full. That there may be chinks or avenues or uh, gaps through which they can appeal or develop relationships with board members or um, kind of get around the reporting process. Um, and I think you're not only sending that signal then to people that report to the superintendent, but also to the people who report to those people, um, you know, who may also feel the same. Um, I have had some experience with boards who uh, go in directions like this, and it is unpleasant um, and does not work well for the organization in the long run. So I just felt like I really had to come, you know say those things, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, it's your jurisdiction. I don't know really matter, but I, I just wanted to express that because I, when I saw it, it really set off some alarm bells for me, as you can tell, I guess. But, yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Appreciate <clears> it. <throat> Kyle, were you saying something before then? No, I'm just kind of... <coughs> that this seems like uh, it's coming from a very specific situation obviously that is still um, in my mind very unresolved and it seems like the logical avenue of some sort of restorative justice process has been decided you're not you decide you're not going in that route as I understand it and so it doesn't surprise me in the least that other avenues pop up of how to try to address this situation that happened at our school and tore our community apart and has still not been dealt with. Thank you. 6.0, approved board orders. Do I have a motion? $39,422.27. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And our next meeting is the board retreat. So we'll get this emails and communication. Thursday, June 14th, right? It that doesn't was sound not that. on the plan okay. that I knew of. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean it isn't. I just... Before we adjourn, did uh, um, the communication that Woden and I have been working on, did anybody have comments? Is it? Are we ready to send oh, it out? I did have a comment on that. I'm so sorry. I had forgotten yeah. all about it until um, Kyle's okay, comment. Okay, so we Thanks, are not Kyle. meeting on the 14th then, so then our next meeting would be in July? No, August. In August. And or when the retreat. I don't okay. know what you're, the retreat. I wasn't here for the discussion, but I'll catch up. Okay. We're um, doing it by email. You didn't miss anything. Do you have a copy of that? Is that anywhere? I should have brought yes, it. Was it. Oh, no, you emailed it to us. Didn't you recently, yeah. Caroline? Uh, Woden did. Woden did? Oh, here we go. Um, I think it would be nice if we could start to get away from we don't agree, like we couldn't agree as a board. As a board, we've been un unable to agree on the goals and parameters of such event. To more of a statement that presents that this is a board, we talked about it, 
and the majority decided this thing. So this is the board's opinion. As opposed to, I don't know, I feel like we're constantly just perpetuating this idea that we can't agree, we can't agree. But we can agree. We can agree that a majority means a majority. And sometimes that opinion is not going to be the opinion shared by all, but as a board, it should be the board's opinion. And I feel like maybe it would be, it would be nice if we could get to that place where we could all feel like, yes, you know, I mean, somebody could ask, and maybe this wasn't my opinion, but I could just, without saying that's not my opinion, the board decided this, you know, we talked about it, it. And we're Thank a bunch you. of smart people who try really hard, and so I guess I, I would propose um, in the second paragraph, the second sentence, changing that from, as a board, we have been unable to agree on the goals and parameters of such event to, uh, and we received mixed messages about its potential usefulness, to, um, as a board, the goals and parameters of such, a, such an event, was well, going to be hard to do on the fly here, seemed unclear to us, and we received mixed messages about its potential usefulness. Does that, you don't like that? You wanted to say that we can't agree? Or you could say, without saying we can't agree, the, the board voted three to two. It, we it's, still hold it, remember? We what? The, right, so you, it's in the, the yeah. minutes from May 10th, you it's could dropping. say the, or was it from May 1st? May 1st. You could say the board did a straw poll. Brian, Allison, Caroline voted no on phase one. Voted and Chris voted yes on phase one. You could just take it right from the minutes, which have not been approved yet. Although we then revisited it the following week and developed our discussion from there. And some of us, including me, changed positions at that point. So I'm, that doesn't feel like a perfect um, representation of I process. thought that we had a different vote than that. That makes sense now that it was at the other meeting. <clears throat> so then what was that vote? It was more, I don't even know that we voted. We, we vote. nobody was in favor of it by the second meeting. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think the majority was not in favor of moving forward. Allison, what about something like at the board we had different visions on the, um, about the goals and parameters of such an event? We could say, as a board, we had different visions on the goals and parameters, as did the as did community members who attended the meeting. Would that be like everybody had lots of different opinions? I mean, I don't really. This is all just wording. It doesn't really matter that much. I just sort of feel like, as a board, it would be really yeah, it'd be nice if we could move towards that one voice that we talked about, the unibrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would, I would say that in regards to the community presence, uh, I'd, I'd like to think that that informed our discussion but didn't uh, necessarily, uh, I'm losing the word at the moment, yeah. but Railroad. you know, sway our discussion because again, I want to, you know, it's that whole idea of um, sort of all voices. Sure. And, Although, if I'm honest, I was pretty swayed by what Ursula was talking about. I mean, she seemed very clear, like, what she expected from something like that was very different, and it really got me wondering, what do other people expect from this? And then, you know, especially vis-a-vis -vis what happened sort of at that training event I went to and realized, I mean, how many hours it takes to get a good result and out of And that things. isn't in those minutes. That's the piece that you said that didn't get in the mm -hmm. minutes of May 1st. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we should add those, too. Um, yeah, because I thought that was really... <clears throat> I, don't, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to... I don't want to be a big fly in the... Honey I think it makes sense that if we're sending it out and it's taken over a year, <laughs> we don't want it to say... Because the reality is it is so much deeper than the board couldn't agree. It's... I mean, yeah, I mean, what vision language work for you, Brian? Mm -hmm. um, different vision on, on what the... The goals and the parameters of such an event. Maybe um, we've, as a board, we've been unable to define the goals and parameters of such an event. There you go. I think we cleared up differing goals and parameters. 
I, I like Allison's wording a lot. I, I think it's honest, it. and I think it um, encompasses it all. She said, as a board, we were unable to determine the I don't goals. I think we had different years. goals for the, I think, I think we all, our, our goal was that yeah. when we move forward, we're going to come out of it in a better place. I mean, I like to think that's what everyone's I think that's true, but the parameters were very different. There might have been, yeah, there might, you know, people might have had different sort of parameters. I don't know. I mean, my memory is that some, some like for instance, Carolyn, I thought you felt like we should definitely try to restrict the conversation using um, guided mediation to help make sure that we stayed focused and on topic. And Woden, my impression of, of how you felt about it was more that you felt like what people needed to bring up, they needed to be able to bring up. And yeah, I, I guess I felt more like Woden did. I just felt like an impossible task. It felt like there was no way we could possibly accomplish that in one community forum. So why waste the money? I don't know. It just seems, after learning a little more about it, like there was, like what we needed was simply not happening without tremendously more resources than we had. Yeah. But, um, and then Brian, I, I'm sorry to say I can't actually remember how, I, think, I can't remember how you came down on it. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> um, I had, um, for me, it wasn't as much around the parameters as it was around um, the proposed process and um, the investment um, and what um, what could realistically be accomplished mm. with you know. I, with sort of the, stru the, the structure that we had been presented. Um, and I did have concerns about that. Uh, I mean, my opposition to phase one was that it felt like it, we could go spend money and go through a process that was very inclusive, it felt to me, and come out of it that, um, or exclusive, I'm sorry, and come out of it with not move, deciding not to move forward anyways and so like we've invested money that's not uh, really well spent and we've potentially created more rifts because of the nature in which at least I saw that that process um, was going to take shape so I think those are some of the, the issues that I had around it could you put a note see the board video from we don't have a video June? Tonight. Oh, from this. Oh. <laughs> in the in the letter, <clears throat> if they if they if you want more detail. So the proposed language is. As a board, we what was it? It wasn't my language, so I <laughs> kind of blocked it out. Um. Well, the last one that was on the table uh, was, go ahead. As a board, we've elected not to move forward on holding a community forum. Instead, we've chosen to use, direct those resources as well as others to um, replenishing the classroom uh, libraries. Uh, it's a little disingenuous. We didn't actually do that. That's true. Well, that's true. That's true. Although, if I were fighting with my husband, I would totally use that argument. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I will, I, 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 true, but I, but I do remember I, I, the, well, I remember because I said it, uh, at our last meeting, after the presentation from the kindergarten yes. uh, teachers, yeah. is that $2,800, I could see yep. $2,800 being well yep. spent, and there seemed to be consensus amongst the group mm -hmm. on that, so, but. I um, think it's pretty important that we be realistic about the fact that we do have different visions on this board. I think we're doing better, um, but I don't think we have, have come to a place of unified visions, perhaps with our, uh, our retreat, we will get there. Um, but I, I'm happy to reframe it more positively, but I do think it's important to note that there have been very different ideas about what this event would do, and um, that was part of why we didn't do it. Yeah. Have we been on board? We might. What was that last? Mm -hmm.
what had we all agreed on the on the um, goals and parameters, we you know we may well have done it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know I'm happy to reframe it. I well, like the vision language. Um, I, again, I, I'm push. I'll push back on the goals because I mean unless parameters. Then. Yeah. I don't need goals. Okay. On the, as a board, we were unable to agree on a vision for the um, a vision and parameters for such an event. Does that answer your concerns, Allison, or not really? I think so, yeah. I mean, what, I, what I'm kind of bringing now is, like, as a board, we felt that the resources that would be needed to meet the varying needs of community members were beyond what Middlesex had available. But it's kind of it's cutting the Gordian knot and completely skipping past sort of the sentiment that you wanted to say and replacing it with another. Uh, I'm okay with it, if, as, as amended. Can you just read it one more time? Um, as a board, we were unable, we have been un were perhaps unable to agree on the vision and parameters for such an event, and we received mixed messages about its potential usefulness. So that's that, is that accomplishing what you would hope to accomplish with this, Allison? I mean, not exactly, it's a but maybe we get there. <coughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like this is it's okay. It, it is no surprise that it's it's an ongoing process. So, yeah. Does it work for you? So should we try and get Chris, uh, send it to Chris and see if he's all covered? Well, we, we had sort of decided, I, I think we set it out, because we had decided at the last meeting, it sort of, that we would just send it. Um, so I think we have to get it out. Yeah. And I... Well, I I'm sorry, there was one other little sure. addition. Um, in terms of the questions, that we received, um, I think we would be remiss not to talk about equity of opportunities for students as well. Was a was something this that we tried to. It was. <laughs> and so I would just say that Woden and I were um, paired intentionally, and. Um, because I did remember the question about equity of opportunities, um, we felt that policies and procedures was a compromise, and we both had lines in there that we thought would be descriptive. Both of us removed one in lieu of policies and procedures. <laughs> And my fear would be, as much as I agree with you, Brian, my fear would be to put that back in would only then fairly open it up to more. I, I thought this, I thought it was actually very well done. I thought it was very, actually I actually thought it was kind of clever. I was like, look at that. So, yeah, I thought, I thought it was nice. <laughs> in fact, it looked to me like you had bolded it, but I maybe oh, that was just the copy that I got. I'm, I'm getting, I could be, I'm getting a laptop, I just, my friends have to delete their stuff first and it's taken six weeks, so I'm like, I would have just gone out and bought one. Anyway, um, yeah, so I was doing it all from an iPad. I don't know what was pulled oh. in and what wasn't. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I guess for me, I, I'm okay with it as is. I do feel like it's, it, it is, a compromise between Woden's version and mine, and I just want it. I just want it out um, before the end of the year, <laughs> and so people know where we are um, and can raise questions and communicate with us. Maybe it would guide our retreat. Maybe it wouldn't, but. All right. <coughs> Can I just, sorry, can I get some communication out just as someone who advocated for it last year and throughout this year? It, I couldn't make it, I mean, I think I sent a note saying I thought I supported it, and um, I haven't talked with people who have done these types of processes in South Burlington, and um, I guess I didn't even fully understand there was a that you were looking at not doing anything. I understood the process was more setting the parameters so when I heard from someone last week out of the blue that 
the decision was actually not to do what was promised in February of 2017. That really took me by surprise, and I am disappointed. I'll just voice that. It's obviously been a difficult process, and I understand it's very complicated, but that might be some of the feedback you get, or maybe it's just me. I don't know. But I, it wasn't clear to me that was what was actually at issue. I thought it was just how is this formulated. Are you clear on how you're distributing? Nope. Um. So I think we had talked over a year ago that we were going to put it in the school newsletter on front porch forum, not put it there, but put that there was a link to the website, the board's part of the website. Okay. So. Is it easy enough to get up on the board's website? And you are the experts here. It's looking, yeah, it is. So what, um, you prefer newsletter to like a Blackboard message? Um, th that was what we had said last year. I think Blackboard message is fine, and that way it's very clear that it's from the board. I kind of would like us to not always publish in the school newsletter, but that's just me. I'm happy to do whatever you want. Front Porch Forum, board website. Well, the Front Porch Forum just says where they can find it. Mm -hmm. It's not actually. The statement. <laughs> I mean, now that it's so short, well Front Porch Forum way. might work, but. Okay, and the board website, how do I proceed with that? Do you have to Just send it to me, we'll get it. Okay. Um, and then school newsletter, we are or are not doing? Personally, I don't want it in the school newsletter. I just, it's. We could put something, how about if we do this, we put a newsletter, there's a comment. The board posted some information about their statement about, I'll take it right from what's in there, but something that, you know, or Amy will take it right from there, but say, if you'd like to know, see the whole statement, please go to the school board website. Okay, and who does that text? Uh, Amy does. Yeah, Amy. If you'll send, uh, Alyssa the blurb, she can put that in. Okay, so I should write it just a very brief blurb saying that whatever, whatever you want. Posted a statement in here is mm -hmm. where you find it. Okay. <clears throat> and then the last thing was a blackboard. Do you want to do that? I would say, I like, say it's like getting a, a you know thunder mm -hmm. board or something like that. I think <laughs> sort of assaulted. And, um, I was just thinking yeah, of I logistics do know what you mean. this time of year. But yeah. Families. If you want it seen, then I'd send it out on Blackboard. Otherwise, you know, it may not be seen in the newsletter because people are busy with graduations and all kinds of things. Blackboard? Blackboard, just an email yeah. through Blackboard. Okay. And possibly also on the, I have recently learned there is a Middlesex community Facebook page. Hmm. <laughs> so can I give a, a tip <laughs> about <laughs> Facebook? <laughs> You have an official Facebook page for the board. You have an official website. You have a board. What? Well, you have a. There's a Facebook for the school that can point people to it. For the Facebook for the school, you. You can use Facebook if you wish, um, but your official site is your school board. Right. We're just trying to make sure. So you could, yeah, you could, I would just post it to the school board. I'm sure it will. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. The Blackboard I sent to you. No, to Alyssa. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. All right. We adjourn at 929, one minute shy. Of